In this screencast we're going to talk about how you graph the sine and cosine functions. And to start with, I'm on a unit circle. That means the radius is 1. And if I draw a little segment straight down that forms a right triangle, then this vertical distance is y. This horizontal distance is x. So from the origin, I go out x, I go up y, and I hit the point x, y. Now in a right triangle, the sine of an angle theta, which is this angle right here, is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which on our unit circle is y over 1. So the sine of theta is the y-coordinate of this point on the circle. Let's go over to Geometry Sketchpad. And what I've done is I have linked this point on the unit circle to this point f right here. And so as it goes up and down, f traces out the y-value of e. And along the x-axis, I'm going from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to bring point D over to the origin. I'm going to put E at 0 radians. I'm going to erase the traces. And we're going to animate point E and D. And as that happens, point F is tracing out the Y values of point E, which correspond to sine values as it moves along the x-axis linked up to point D. And that is a sine curve. At pi over 2, it hits a maximum. At pi, it's 0. At 3 pi over 2, it hits a minimum. And at 2 pi, it's back to 0. OK, so let's go back and let's look at what cosine would be. Well, cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is going to be our x over 1, which is just plain old x. So the x-coordinate of any point on the unit circle corresponds to the cosine of the angle theta. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the x-coordinate of E, which is the value of the cosine, and I'm going to trace it. That's going to be the y value of my tracing point, And my x-coordinate is going to match point D down here. OK, so I'm going to go to Graph plot points. And remember, I want the x-coordinate to match my d. And I want the y-coordinate to be my cosine value, which is the x-coordinate of point E. Hit plot. I'm done. And let's trace that point. bring E down to 0 radians, erase those little traces, and now we should get a cosine curve. Notice that cosine hits 0 at pi over 2. It hits negative 1 at pi. Back to 0 at 3 pi over 2. And back to positive 1 at 0. If this shape looks a little bit familiar, that's because it is exactly the same shape as sine. It's just been shifted over pi over 2 units. So to review, if I'm going to graph y equals the sine of x 
it takes two pi radians to complete one cycle. That means the period of sine is two pi. The maximum value that sine reaches is one. The minimum value is negative one. The sine starts at zero. Sine starts at zero, increases, then decreases, and then back to two pi. If I'm going to graph cosine, it also takes two pi radians to complete one cycle. So its period is also two pi. Its maximum is also one, and its minimum is negative one. But instead of starting at zero like sine does, cosine starts at one, goes down to negative one, and finishes at one. You need to memorize both of these graphs here, the parent function of sine and the parent function of cosine.